Quick buzz at stumps, Adam Collins and Harsha Bagley. At the end of the third day here at the Oval, England are back in a commanding position, despite the fact that India actually won the first half of the day. Indeed, they won it convincingly. Mm. Um, Ravinda Jadeja, 86. We must be wondering, watching, why wasn't he playing the whole series? He's got these mad skills with the bat as well as the ball. Couldn't get injured at team balance, but I think he's leaving the country with his stocks heightened, despite the fact that he's only played one of five test matches. Yes, that was one of the interesting things that happened. The more interesting thing is... Adam's got a jacket on. Oh, I've relented at last. <laughs> From a cricketing point of view, yes, Ravinda Jadeja. The reason Jadeja was not getting into the side was India thought one spinner was good enough. Mm. If they thought at any point the two spinners, then maybe Jadeja would have come in, even though they made the choice with Kuldeep Yadav. Yeah. So it was, it was slightly muddled who's a second spinner going to be. Uh, is, was the combined contribution of Jadeja going to be worth more than the mystery of Kuldeep Yadav? That was settled after, after Lords. Mm. But gee, he's had a fantastic game. Uh, of all his skills, the one I like the most is him in the field. He is like a panther in the field. I have not seen an Indian run like that. But he, he gave you four wickets. He doesn't do a lot with the ball. That's sometimes an advantage when the rough starts to come. And, and with the bat, how we, what we would give in India to have him bat like that more often. I met him many years ago and he said, I'm at heart a batsman. But his, his career has gone somewhere else. He's, he's become a spinner who bats now. But if he can bat like that, didn't he bat a proper, like, like a batsman? Yeah. He, he was letting the ball go. He was hitting straight down the ground. How good was that six of Anderson with the new Glorious. Ball? Yeah. Absolutely. And the way he milked the strike. It's as though he was the, the senior man. And I guess he was the senior man of those partnerships. But he batted with a degree of control and poise that you could easily see in the top six of most yeah. international sides. Yes, but we've thought that for a while before. And if, if Jadeja can bat at six, we, we talk a great deal here on Crick Bars, everywhere else about the balance of that Indian side. If Jadeja can bat even at seven, it'll still add enormously to the, to the balance of the Indian side. But we'll have to wait and see whether he can do that consistently. What will go in his favour is that because he bowls such tight lines, he'll probably make the side as the spinner on surfaces that are not doing a lot for him. I won't be surprised if he just pips Ashwin to be the lead spinner when India go to Australia. That would be a massive call. But hurry, man yeah. on debut makes a half century. Yes. We weren't necessarily expecting that when we spoke 24 hours ago. He was very scratchy yesterday, especially towards the start of his innings. But he, he matured and flourished nicely this morning. Yes, it's quite a story. I mean, he walked into a storm, didn't he? Anderson and Broad, about a thousand wickets between them in, <laughs> in test match cricket, were bowling beautifully. And all of a sudden, one's thudding into his pads. One is just going above. He's playing and missing saying there's a top edge and you must have wondered gee I was much happier where I came from where am I and then he started to grind his grind himself in and he played I, I thought there's a straight drive that he played a cover drive that he played and generally most of us were very impressed with the calmness that he that he brought his, his is like so many people in Indian cricket a beautiful story a story of hard work of sacrifice of perseverance he's now got a half century on debut but my batting moment Adam well the, the funniest batting moment there were two and right. they came from Bumrah one when he just about got out of a bouncer from Stuart Broad and then how good was that exaggerated defensive oh. shot? <laughs> Any lower, he could have just picked up a bit of grass with his teeth. <laughs> I would have enjoyed yeah. that, especially yeah. considering it felt as though Stuart Broad might have been getting his own back for some bounces yes, bowled at him yes. through the course of the series. So he switched gears as Alistair Cook's final innings in international cricket. The two minute standing ovation he received oh. from the Oval Faithful was very special. Hadn't even made a run at that stage. He's on 46 not out overnight. I was crunching the numbers through the course of the day. He needs 50 in order to finish with a batting average of 45 in test cricket. He's had an average of 45 for eight years. He truly deserves, for the bulk yes. of his career, his average has been above that mark. He really truly does deserve to go with that. But he could still get three figures. The way he's batting after Joe Root came out this afternoon, or late this evening I should say, it would give the suggestion that he's still got a a little bit more gas in the tank than he might have said during the week. I'll tell you what, he's also caught much better in this test match yeah. than he has. Uh, but can you imagine going out, not a single bum on the seat? 2006, this young man came to Nagpur, he got 100. But when he's leaving, he's leaving as one of the giants of the game. And you're absolutely right. He played and missed a little bit. But as the innings has worn on, he's actually gone on. He's actually looked better and better. Who knows? If he had got out for 20, that would have been the biggest statistical oddity of all. You'd have finished you can do it. 3 for 5. <laughs> you wanted to say that, were you? Uh, it was one or the other. Yeah, yeah, either I, way, I 1, 2, line. 3, 4, 5. But when yes. he did pass it with a lovely on drive to take him yes. to 21, uh, the, the next Ralston will be a half century, hopefully tomorrow morning, for the sake of, I think every cricket fan would love to see Alistair Cook raise his bat one last time. He was liberated by Joe Root's presence as well, undoubtedly. Root has struggled a bit throughout the course of the summer. The way you know Joe Root's in form is the same way you know that Stephen Smith's in form. They got off to a flying start. Root yeah. did that 
that today. He looks like he might be just ready after making a duck in the first inning, struggling for the bulk of the series here to just break through and end on a good note. I have a feeling that apart from that rough for the spinner, it's still a pretty decent surface to bat on. But look at this, Adam. 154 now the lead. The moment it gets past 250 in there with the chasing record in the fourth innings, we'll start to think, oops, where, where do we can we score these runs? And England don't have to worry at all. England yeah. can bat all day if they want because the series is in their bag. India have got to fight to make it 3-2. I, I just think if England get 100 runs by, by lunch or maybe a little after lunch tomorrow, then this... The fight will go out of the Indian team. That's my right. fear. For India to stay in this game, they need two or three wickets very quickly and, and trigger a collapse that we've seen before from England. We'll have to wait and see. What I would love to see is Mohamed Shami be the catalyst for <laughs> a collapse. We talked about it on wicket. the first cut. He did get a wicket at long last. Keaton Jennings letting a ball go that came back the other way. But he beat Cook six times before the tea break yeah. in the space of two overs. He came back and continued where he left off in the final session. Shami has taken leaps and bounds through this series. He, he, he's he gone from being, I felt, the third cog or the third wheel to being arguably the most dangerous bowler with the ball in his hand, even if the numbers haven't necessarily reflected that quite yet. And that's something worth thinking about. Why? is Shami not getting more wickets when he's moving the ball so well? I thought he bowled a lovely outswinger. He kept going past the outside edge of the left-handers all along. Someday, he's going to bowl a lot of nonsense to take seven wickets if there is <laughs> if there is any any justice left. But I, I get the feeling, end of the third day, that uh, England 154 ahead, eight, eight wickets in hand. Uh, they're, they're well ahead in this game. They're, they're throwing the gates open tomorrow to the extent to which the admission prices have come down. Hopefully the Oval is sold out to see the finale of Alistair Cook's yes. test career, at least the batting side of it. Let's hope from a cricket perspective he goes out with three figures, but at the same time, the India fight hard, scrap hard, take these last yeah. eight wickets and make it a real game tomorrow, Harsha. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait and see. My, my gut feel tells me England England's still ahead, that England will inch ahead, they won't try to march ahead. But yes, it'll be uh, it'll be nice in a sense if, if Cook can go out on a high. So if Cook does get those 54 runs more to get to his 100, it means India are out of the game already. Thanks for your company on Creek Buzz at Stumps. Adam Collins and Harsha Bagley. We'll catch you tomorrow.